another day. All right, let's ride. I just want to try to get a picture of how far we're going to go into that. You going to dive deep into that, or what you what you think about doing? I'd say we could do about a good eight feet deep, you know what I'm saying? Not God, man. Feet, eight feet. That sounds kind of nasty. All right, so <laughs> we, <laughs> let's just do it like this, man. I don't know which episode this is, 61 to 60, some shit like that, but this will be the new year, new me. I'm just bullshitting. It's the end of the year joint. I got somebody on the phone. I don't know who this nigga is. But no, it's my partner, man. But let's go ahead and start things off. And I'm going to hit you with this. I don't know if you know this or not, right? But apparently Floyd Mayweather dropped. He knocked out some little um, Japanese kid. Oh, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> he was supposed to fight him earlier in the year, and I guess he got fucked up. But I clicked on some link on some social media and just seen him beating the brakes out of cuz. He hitting that, that little boy with a... A combination and cuz laid down. So he talking about he was crying. Oh, yeah. So I ain't even look at that oh, shit, yeah. bro. I, I didn't look at it either, but I, I know what it is. You talking about because every motherfucking body on my damn timeline, they were talking about it too. One of my homeboys from Fools said he made the joke about the shit talking about some this nigga made more money than the strippers at KOD. And then I respond, he may know he made easy, he made money easy than the stripper at KOD. And then I ended up responding back with the rebuttal, well, uh, it's going to be even easier now being that KOD got evicted. Oh, I ain't know that. Way. I didn't know that at all. Like, I heard about it, but I don't, I mean, I, I hear about it in the rap musics. So I'm not too uh, keen on yeah. what it, I mean, I know what it is. I just didn't know they got evicted. That'd be all right, because yeah. the rappers they love got, to spend they got, money. Yeah, they, they, just, they, they just got evicted, like, maybe two, three months ago. Oh, well, Happy New Year, KOD. <laughs> happy New Year. <laughs> I guess they backed that thing up, huh? Big ass moving truck. Got your ass up out of there. Damn. They were fucking them on the red. Oh, how you? All right, man. All the rappers talking about KOD and y'all can't pay the rent. Brilliant, guys. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> you can put that in either general news or some music news. That's brilliant right there. That's fucking crazy. That's ratchet news. I don't want to be nowhere near nothing got anything to do with KOD. Me and the queen are fine. Like, I'm, I'm straight on that. But, uh, hey, I, I just saw something on Twitter that said, uh, was it John Kelly blamed uh, Jeff Sessions for the shit that's going on at the border? So I was like, I don't know what uh, bro's going to do with these guys, man. There's a... Uh, Nigga, it was something else, too. Uh, it was a Mexican news reporter. Basically, he ended up doing a, a, a news report about the so-called wall, and he climbed over that shit just for shit to get it, just to prove what the fuck the wall was going to do. Oh, I think I seen a picture of that. But, bro, they know that. I think at this point, it's about um, it's about him throwing a temper tantrum. And I got a couple more of those to talk to you about. But everybody knows what this is, bro. This is me throwing a temper tantrum because I failed. This is a classic, hey, I failed, so let me blame everybody else that's around me. I'm going to blame the Democrats. And the thing is, he told them he's going to do this. Like, I, no, he lied and said, I'll take the blame for, for, for the government shutdown, which in turn he didn't. We all know he's a dishonest asshole. So he said, I'll take the fall for it. When they met in his office, with, uh, it was him and um, I almost called Shorty Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. <laughs> I saw something about the notorious RBG today, man. I'm going to have to watch that. But he, he told them in the, in the old office, like, I will shut the government down. It'll be on me because I want a policy. And then he turned around a couple weeks later, blame it on them and tell them I'm not doing nothing until they fix it. But they're not going to fix it because yeah. even though it's going to be spun by people on the right, Fox News, other conservative media outlets, CRTV on Facebook, all that shit, the Candace Owens is of the world, even though they're going to spin this shit and try to make it seem like he's punk rock, like she said, He's just being an asshole. 
and he don't know how to get shit done because as a as an American, as a supporter of our proud military, I don't want to see shit like this in the public eye. This is all things that make our country look buffoonish. That's already the stereotype of Americans anyway. And he is the ultimate American stereotype, a fucking buffoon. So they're going to let him continue to make this fool of himself. They're not going to budge, just like he ain't going to budge. But you know what they're going to do? They're going to not budge quietly and let him throw this fucking temper tantrum and continue to look like an idiot who fucking failed. Because at the end of the day, fam, yeah. that's what it is. You fail. You feel me? All day. Yeah, I just don't understand that shit. But that we, we know about that tantrum, right? So there's another yeah. Trump-related tantrum that took place. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compare the two. I'm going to ask you which one you think is worse, right? But did you yeah. see the one where the guy, um, he went in to buy a vape? or some vape fill. I'm not one of these nerds. I ain't gonna say nerds. I'm not one of these people who smoke and the vape and blow all. I don't know nothing about that shit. I guess it's like the fluid or whatever. They put in the vapes, whatever. Yeah. He went to the vape the shop jewel. to buy one. The jewel, yeah. And um, the, I guess the guy told him to leave because of what he was wearing. Now, you can look at this one or two ways. You can go back to civil rights era and say, man, this is fucked up you want to kick somebody out from not for them not agreeing with your policy or whatever and have them get out which is if you want to dig deep you can pull that one out your ass and go with that one because the guy at the store he's wrong no matter how you feel about it he's wrong when it comes to his his job his occupation he's wrong as somebody who's working to support somebody else's business he's wrong but the guy who came in there Obvious asshole. Obvious asshole. And I'm going to assume that this man has done this shit like this before. He walks in, bigger dude, right? Black, yeah. make America great again hat. Black t-shirt that says Trump with the American flag in big ass letters. You don't wear that if not to antagonize other people. You feel what I'm saying? And I don't know if it was just by happenstance that the guy happened to be, I guess, a hardcore anti-Trump person. (laughs) But it was just too crazy. Did you see that video at all, bro? I I, I haven't seen that video. Bro, you go. You talk about meltdown. Bro, you know, I tell people all the time, these days, bro, I'm in the middle. I lean left because of, you know, the common sense shit. Just being courteous, right? But bro had a legit, like, he, he had a fucking meltdown. There's no, there's no other way to describe it. He looked like he had some type of psychotic break the way he was screaming, get the fuck out of the store. I'm like, bro, you, do you own this place? <laughs> like, who, who do you work for that's going to allow you to scream like this? And, you know, eventually he lost because the guy got on the phone and called his boss, the, the cashier. He got on the phone, called his boss, and I guess his boss was like, yeah, you're going to go ahead and... uh." Get this man what he wants so he get the fuck out of our store. So he ended up serving the man anyway. We still kept telling him to get the fuck out. So now what this guy's going to do, which he already did, upload the video. So that guy, the neck bigger guy, is probably fired anyway. There's <laughs> just this poor black dude over there trying to get his smoke on, <laughs> waiting the whole time. I couldn't even watch the whole shit. It was funny. It's fucked up because I don't like people like that. And I know um, yeah. you know what somebody like that is trying to do. They're trying to to evoke some type of emotion from people that are on the opposing side because you can walk down the street with that shit on and get all the high fives you want like yeah make America great again man cool and all that shit you're gonna get a few of those because there's a population that's with that shit but you wear that shit to antagonize people that aren't seeing things from your viewpoint that may want to get into a discussion with you because in my brain if I envision that person this is the individual who's who's got all Trump's numbers in his bag, in his back pocket. And he's waiting for somebody to say something to him. So that he can be like, okay, well, let's have a discussion about it. And then over-talk him, and then hit him with all these fluffed up Trump facts. We know all, a lot of this shit is hangover from what Obama did. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you how I know that for a fact. Anything that's bad, it's Obama's fault. Anything that's good, Anything that's good. Obama had nothing to do with it. Trump did it. <laughs> so it's like, all right, man. Um. I'm not going to play the fool no more. I, I kind of know what it is. But, bro, if you get the chance, check out that video. 
Now, I'm gonna take it. The other one is. The other one is um, the GameStop situation. Did you see that one? I think I saw that one. He went in with a. Uh... No, he he ended up going in. He was asking about something, and they didn't they didn't they didn't want to serve him at all or, or service him at all. And basically, kicked. is that the one? Bro, let me let me tell you, I just watched it today. So the video's been out for a while. So basically there's a transgender individual. Um, I would call him a man. Just looking. I'm not gonna assume. He, he apparently, I don't mean to laugh because this is fucked up. He apparently flipped the fuck out because I guess the um the cashier at GameStop just, I guess, out of routine, referred to him as sir. <laughs> and that's kind of where the video kind of starts taking off. Where, yeah, he yeah. called him sir. He's like, I'm not a sir. He, he went the fuck off, bro. And then somebody else was like, sir, calm down, sir. And they were, I guess they were like, they weren't, um, either they were being antagonistic or they were just reacting to what they saw. Like, and this ain't like, oh, yeah, he gonna fool you. No, this is like obvious Hey, you got that man with little girl clothes on. Not little girl. He just—he was dressed like a young girl. You know them jeans and the t-shirt and the hair. He looked like a, yeah. a young girl, like something they would wear. Not a grown ass woman. And they, I guess, called him sir out of reflex. And he was going the fuck off, bro. Like, don't fucking call me yeah. sir. I'm a woman. They was like, okay, I'm sorry, ma'am. And you know, you ever been in one of them situations where you actually didn't call somebody ma'am, sir, and all? You, I mean, I've done it. Yeah. Looking at a woman, called her sir. Looking at a man, called him ma'am. Just making a mistake. But when you look like yeah. one, but portraying the other, like you, you gotta get people, you gotta be prepared for that, in my opinion. Just, that's just me. Look, this is your day-to-day -day life. This is how you feel about yourself. You know in your mind, you are a woman in the man's body. When I see you, I don't know that. Like I, it's a shock to me. Like, okay, I have to, you can't expect me to calibrate my brain to your setting. When, what I've been taught my whole life is that my calibration setting is normal because what my eyes see has been taught to me as a man. So that's what's embedded in my brain. What you feel in your mind is in the minority. What I see and what I believe is something that has been taught and reinforced to me my whole life. As yes, that is correct. Like the sky is blue. Okay, I look at the sky, the sky is blue. Hey man, is the sky blue? Yeah, the sky's fucking blue. Okay, we good. Now, if you see the sky as orange, and I'm not talking about like sunset, if you just see the sky as orange all the time, I don't know that you see the sky, you know what I mean? Like even if you, hey, my, I, right. you got a shirt on, so I see the sky as orange. And it's gonna take me a minute to, to calibrate that, especially if there's like a, an, an exchange, just heating exchange. I'm not thinking about that. It's all reflex. So he got fucking livid bro and went the fuck off and I'm just thinking like bro he, this man is I don't I'm confused I think he's confused I don't know if he's transgender trans age because he went from wanting to be like a wanting to be a woman thinking he's a woman to acting like a man saying hey well let's take this outside so now I'm even more confused because yeah, he said, he said, you want to take this outside? I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute here, uh, Pat. You can't get mad at me <laughs> for referring to you as a man when you look like a man. I apologize. It's a reflex. My bad. Then you challenge me to go outside and fight you like a man when I'm. you want me to refer to you as a woman, but then... On the way out, you throw a tantrum and kick over some shit like a child. So I'm confused. You're confused. Let's just have a beer, man. <laughs> like, I'm just, I was like, damn. Like I'm like, what? Is he like transgender and age? Because his his attire looked like that of a what I would think a younger girl would wear. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's just the way I'm looking at it. And, yeah, then... Like, the way he was acting, I'm like, bro, you get mad at him for not calling you a woman when you're acting like a man and a child at the same time, bro. You just need to leave. And you're at GameStop. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know, man. Like, I know grown men going to GameStop, but, like, yeah, maybe you just need to order shit on the Internet until you, until you start 
coping with people the, reacting yeah. to you a certain type of way. Like, there's no... Matt, are you getting surgery to where you actually start looking like what it is that you would want to be addressed as? Hey, man, can't afford surgery. You got to go to GameStop. You got to get them sticks, bro. Um, well, hey, is it? Then, that, then that just goes on consumer discipline. True, but it's going to take a lot of work. Like, if you see anybody, like, they're going to have to, they can't, like, not, they can't make his back not be that wide. Like, you can't change his build. God damn. Yeah, like, this is, like, this is, this is, a, this is a tall individual. And, I mean, she is tall. I guess that's what I'm supposed to be saying. She's, she's a tall, she's a big girl. Right? I, I, I will give you, you she? Okay. She. She's a big girl. So, in order for her frame to look like a woman, I don't think they can do that. There's nothing you can do about it. You just are what you are, physically, um, as far as your build is. I'm not going to go into the gender shit. But physically, your build is your build, unless you can exercise a certain way to proportion yourself like a woman. I don't know. But that shit was wild. You should definitely check that out. That is my, um, I will give it to you, that is my video of the year. (laughs) <laughs> that is the wildest shit I've seen all year just because of the um, the the amount of confusion and it's late in the year and I'm forgetting a lot of shit that's why I just say no I won't call this like a, a wrap up it's not like a real wrap up because that's what skills and uh, now um, Uncle Murder do I can't do that for you because I'm going to forget shit and I really didn't feel like backtracking all year for some stuff I wasn't keeping track on so I'm going to just go with the, the big stories Cap still ain't got signed to a team. The Jaguar season was a fucking mess. Bro, do you understand how much fun I had arguing with people on Facebook about the Jacksonville Jaguars? It was great. <laughs> Mostly because I was trolling. Did you watch any of the games? I didn't watch any of the NFL season games, nor did I watch any of the NCAA games either. Let me tell you. When, yeah, when when I started seeing all of the news about how badly the Jaguars sucked, and even more so, again, I'm I'm still within that, I still stand somewhat conflicted with the whole Kaepernick situation, so it's like, fuck it, I'm not going to watch it this season either. I ain't mad at you for that. Yeah, I was like, I, so I'm not going to watch it either. I was like, but as a standoff, it may not be any better, but... I can at least enjoy college football. Nope. <laughs> Hell no. Really, Tiger just fucked the whole season up, and I'm like, yeah, this is not gonna be worth watching. Bro, I'm I can't not. Watch one season. I'm not gonna blame Willie Tiger for the whole thing. And down at Florida State's what we talking about now. For those listening, yeah, that that yeah. Jacksonville Florida State combination for football fans was terrible. But for me, it all boils down, and this is a bit of football nerdery right here. It all boils down to both teams have bad offensive lines. Everybody blames the quarterback when the offensive line is bad, is bad because nobody knows who the offensive linemen are. Unless they're like some superstar standout offensive lineman, people don't know who they are. So they always blame the guy who has the ball every play. Fair. But a quarterback is going to throw interceptions when the offense is limited, and the offense is always going to be limited when the offensive line is bad. Nah, what, what happened in Florida State that pissed me off was the east-west plays. Like, don't do plays where you got to throw the ball behind the fucking line of scrimmage and end up losing yards before you gain them. That shit pissed me off. But I do see that Willie's going to be out there trying to recruit and do some things. He'll have a whole offseason to get his his guys in there and to get his system yeah. working and to get his whole shit together. So we'll see what's going on in Florida State. The shit with Jacksonville... It's crazy. Like that that was so such a drop off from the the year before. Before. Yeah. They gonna still have Blake. They firing coaches. Then they put the other kid in there like he was gonna save the day. Cody Kessler didn't do shit either. Had the same issues. They could have got and now, and, and now they're talking about some doing all of that overhaul of, of, of bullshit that could have been easily avoided if they would have went with this the first go round. And, and did it correctly and accurately. This is this is all that I do know and, and what could have been gathered within the last season. Yes, Blake Bortles did a great job within the last season. He did a good, he did a, he did a, a a phenomenal job. Everybody was on one accord. Everything was going 
great. But one of the things that a lot of people has counted out for Blake Bortles, which I actually put as a number one factor, was he is inconsistent. Oh, yeah. I was like, how you slice it? He is inconsistent. Yeah. Like, and I would... Like, I would never say he's like, oh, yeah, he's like a a second-tier, third-tier QB. Not yet. I would call him a fourth-tier quarterback that's developing. Now, with all the money they put into him, I believe that the ownership saw him as that as well. The ownership, Jim, and the coach is like, hey, he's going to develop if we give him time. If he don't have time, he's not going to develop, and you've already paid this money. They owe it to themselves as an organization to let get this man, yeah, to get what they put into it. Because if they don't, then they're going to be left with just somebody who's taking up their money that they can't utilize for somebody else. So they might as well see if the offensive line gets healthy next year, Leonard Four and Leonard Fournette's healthy next year. If the offense can run the same way, because you don't want to, what you don't want to do is blow this team up right now while you have a defense that's this good. If you can get the defense to the point where they can stay off the field and the offense can continue drives and not get off the field every fucking three downs, then you may have a season like you had the year before. But until they get the continuity with the offense figured out, the defense is going to suffer. But you don't want to blow it up right now and go into full rebuild mode when you got this much talent on defense. Because you, it's sports, bro. It's like um, It's like any other sport. The guys are only going to get older. So yeah. if you're going to blow it up, you better blow it up now. But it's hard to blow it up now because now you have a quarterback who you owe a lot of money to. So you have to give him the opportunity to um, to gain that trust back with the, with the coach in the offseason and to work with his guys in the offseason to see if they get on the same page, to let your team get healthy. I still say you draft a QB, maybe not first, second round, depending on what you want to pay. I say you draft a QB and develop a QB to take his spot, which is the obvious thing to do because you can't get rid of this guy. That is true. Yeah. And also, and also get your O-line, get that O-line beats the fuck up. But what I can too say about offense too, from what it was that I have been reading within like sports blogs and shit like that, Leonard Fournette may not be coming back. I don't know. He, after, the, after, after that one game suspension, and, and he and he fucking goofed up that uh that contract. Oh that yeah. One game suspension. Yeah, that one game suspension put his ass up on the block for trading. And then um, you know, Tom Coughlin is older guy, disciplinarian guy, and he he called people out. And uh, they said they were fooling around on the bench during the last game of the season. I'm like, look, bro, you mad at you gonna publicly blast them? The team been suffering all year long. They probably relieved that the season's over with. They're going to have a, t- a chance to recharge and come back better next year. You want to talk about these guys, but your coaching staff is struggling all fucking year. Come on, fam. You yeah. need these young players. I know you were disciplinary, but that's some shit you could do behind the scenes. Like, that's something that could be done behind the scenes. Like, you, you want your players to trust you. And believe in what you're doing as a disciplinarian, bro. Don't don't shit on them in public like that. Get at them behind the scenes. Like they're young, they're gonna be outspoken. They're players, a younger guy. Use the elder, catch them behind the scenes, let them know they fucked up. That's my personal opinion. I know you got whatever your reputation is. I don't give a fuck about that because I want wins. So I want the team to be cohesive. That's just my yeah. opinion on it, man. But um, have you seen any basketball this year? Have you been paying attention? Um, I started wa- no, I, I started watching a little bit of I started watching a little bit of basketball. The only game that I that I actually ended up catching so far this season was uh Minnesota and fuck, who was it? Minnesota and I wanna say was it was it uh was it Milwaukee or was it I can't remember who the fuck it was they were playing, but it was a it was a Minnesota game. I ended up catching that one. That was on that was uh, that weekend of my birthday. Oh shit! Okay, and word. I seeing, yeah, I was seeing I, I was seeing how well they were doing. Uh, I ended up catching a last little bit of the highlights where where Derrick Rose balled out. Oh man! And, and and just seeing that, it was just like damn, like yeah, something had just. 
something was just sparked in me just seeing all of this shit and, and seeing his stats. And I'm like, something really must have uh, revived him too because he, he that's, that's Dead Rose 2.0. Yeah, 3.0. so far that's my sports moment of the year. I mean, what's the last? Day? Yeah, that's my sports moment of the year, bro. Calendar year, because the, yeah. like I want to see if he's gonna be my. He would be my athlete of the year if, like you know, the NBA started on like a calendar year, but it doesn't. They start around like fiscal year time frame, so it's kind of hard to, October, to judge. October, yeah. yeah, but um, for me right now as a huge Derrick Rose fan, that's my sports moment of the year. That and D Wade and LeBron playing their last game against each other. Or the last game, D Wade's last game in LA, that was um, that was big for me to see that as a guy who watched them both coming to the league together. I thought that was huge. Yeah. But uh, that D Rose moment, he scored the 50 points, man. The whole league was happy for that guy, man. It was one of those things that I really appreciate as a fan that he's he's getting back to where he was. I just don't want him to overexert himself and get hurt. But I I, I want to see him go all out. out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're right. That's everybody, but I don't. Uh, I'm just, I'm happy for him. He was getting MVP chance when he went back and played in Chicago. So I, that's, that's dope. That's yeah. dope. The, the city appreciated him. Like, yeah, you stupid motherfuckers. And you know what, what kills me about that is they ended up firing the guy who uh, got, who traded the whole team. Not the guy, like the coach who traded, who wanted to trade the whole team. They traded all the players, the Jimmy Butlers, the fucking Taj Gibsons, the Derrick Roses. They traded these guys out yeah. to get his system in there because he couldn't corral the players. And now they got a, a bunch of players in there now that it's not working so well. We got a bunch of bad ACLs on the team, and then they paid, I think about, I want to say, I, I want to say 20 million or more for Jabari Parker, who's had two bad ACLs, and now he's not even in the fucking rotation. They're trying to move him, and they paid this dude a significant amount of money. And the Bulls are pissed me off right yeah, now. Yeah, that was. That, yeah, that was a dumbass move. But, I that mean, was a real big dumbass. Yeah, that was that was fucking uh, stupid. Well, um, and, and then um, I caught the last quarter of the, the the Curry brothers playing off against each other. Oh, okay, that's cool. And and yeah, and and, and watching that and just seeing that, and, and at the same time, it was almost like okay, these niggas just took their backyard game of twenty one or whatever. And basically just like, okay, we finna up the ante and actually have it like five on five. Five on five game twenty one. See who see who, you know what I'm saying, see who who really gonna shut who out. And then when and then when it was all said and done, you know what I'm saying, they they overall were being what every sibling would like to see, especially if they're both playing in the league. And both, you know what I'm saying, have a well respectable and, and a well admirable career. You know what I mean? And and that right there was that right there was cool to see. Yeah, unfortunately for the younger brother Seth, man, he had to he was a star at Duke and he got into the league and didn't turn out well for him. He's bounced around a couple of teams, went to the um what's now the I guess the G League. It was a D yeah. League and he got he made it back to the league, so it was good to see him get that opportunity man and of course man if that's your brother you've been playing him your whole life and that's like even like if that's you said we both make it to the league and we on different teams when i see you you goddamn right i want the smoke <laughs> we've been battling for years i want all the smoke goddamn <laughs> yeah let's do this like i've been whooping your ass for years you've been, oh, you've been whooping my ass for years like yeah let, let's do it it's just like rappers when they oh yeah yeah let's get in this booth and let's do it we gonna see what's up with these verses same thing but i thought that was cool but if i Sticking with sports, if I had to give you a sports person of the year for me, just thinking off the top of my head, I would say Baker Mayfield, the quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. I know you didn't watch a lot of football this year. Oh, yeah. No, I seen that game last night, unfortunately, because when I was coming back from uh, VA and we stopped at uh, Kim's God, Godmother house and uh, her, her son was in there watching. And I, just from watching that game, First off, just their stats alone, seven seven and one. These motherfuckers made a full one eighty from the past what five six <laughs> seasons. Yeah, they they look long. good, man. They look good, and uh, for what for what's going on in Cleveland right now, well, you know, with LeBron not being there no more, like 
that guy, Baker, is so important to that city right now. He is super important. With their left guard, with their left tackle retiring, Joe Thomas retiring, they didn't have a face to put on their franchise. Like there's a there's like a skill player. Like having a lineman, that's great. But when you have a QB that's that's good like that, that's a rookie that's doing this thing, former Heisman winner going there and actually showing up producing, that's great for their city. And I'm telling you, if you're a Cleveland fan, Baker Mayfield needs to be you protected. You got a lot. You got a lot to brag about. Yeah. You have a shit ton to brag about. Y'all just like got to make the playoffs next year, but y'all got to protect that guy. Don't let that guy do nothing stupid and get in trouble and and be looked at a certain way, like how you know Big Ben had his issues with um beating up these fucking women or whatever he was doing with these girls and then shit that came out about him basically trying to go for sloppy seconds or following behind Trump getting his left over with Stormy Daniels and all that shit. Bitch, y'all ain't know about that. But um, <laughs> Baker yeah, Mayfield I, 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 is to be protected. He's Protect Baker Mayfield. Don't let him make no mistakes, man. He's good for the city of Cleveland. They need a sports star right there while they're trying to get their uh, basketball team built back up and then their baseball team that was up then down. We'll see where they go next year too. But for the football team, that's fucking great. Fantastic. Yeah, would, that's my. That that's my. Sports. I actually wanted for them to. Uh, they were they were giving Baltimore they were giving Baltimore a hell of a run. Yeah, but that's they rookie on that rookie though. That's like Lamar Jackson's good for Baltimore as well because fucking um, I don't know how he got he failed to the, in the draft to like the thirty first pick. He won the Heisman the year before. Jacksonville. Miami could have picked him up. Anyway, um, I just don't yeah. know how that happened, but just to see those two rookies go at it. And I didn't see it. I got to hear about it, man. Um, yeah, I think it's that's good for the league. They play in the same division. I think it's fantastic. And the, with the rivalry they're going to have going throughout sports, man, they're, always, they're going to be linked for the next few years if we get lucky. Because I remember Andrew Luck and uh, RG3 were, were supposed to be linked, and then they both got hurt. And uh, yep. Andrew Luck was out for damn near two years. Now. RG3, Andrew Luck had a decent season. They going to the playoffs. RG3 out the goddamn league, I think. Or well, he's a backup somewhere. Yeah. Um, not doing much, but it could be over just like that. So I hope that this this lasts for a long time. Maybe Magic and Bird out there in them streets. But just, you know, Baltimore Ravens, Cleveland Browns. But Baker Mayfield... That's my guy, sports, sports person of the year, man, just because of what he's been able to do and lift up that city. It's fucking great. It's great. Too bad for Tyrod Taylor, though, man. Got hurt. Oh, well. Um, Man, we already 30-something minutes in, bro. Hey, so before yeah. I start asking you these uh, music questions about the hippity hops, let me think real quick about um what all happened this year. And uh, cause that's gonna be that's a big discussion. Well, let me just um, let me ask you a couple of what if questions, bro. Yeah. Right. This one's gonna have to do with politics. What if black conservatives, the people like Candace Owens, the amazing Lucas, um, I forgot the guy that's on Fox News, the black dude is on there on the weekends and shit. Um, but black conservative political commentators in general. What if? Instead of talking at us while talking to white people, they talk to us instead. What do you think the outcome would be? Uh, for that, if there are a lot of informed people or people who are willing to get informed now, within that, maybe they will actually listen and, and take what is, what is being said to either fuel up the, I guess you could call it the, the, the second black awakening, if you want to call it that. The second black awakening, it'll probably end up, uh, yeah, it probably would end up uh, pretty much starting the second black awakening. I, I can see it like, you remember the Boondock episode where they made, um, Martin Luther King, he didn't get killed. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then how like they heard the little speech from Martin Luther King, and then they were like, "Oh yeah, black people heard it. Black people got angry. Black people actually started revolting 
and and actually revolutionizing themselves and doing everything that was well needed for the black community. And then after that, they showed a picture of the newspaper like Oprah was president for 2020. Oh, that should be hype. And I mean, <laughs> I mean, I agree. I think it's time that we, um, as people, I think we need to be more receptive to information from our own, regardless of political party. Just, hey, let's let's really look at this and see what's going to benefit us. I think there needs to be unity. My only issue with black conservatives, and I said it many times on this damn podcast, is like, hey, if you guys talk to us and not at us, we'd be more apt to listen. Because not all the information you're putting out is bullshit. Some of it, I believe, is like, hey, let's back the right, let's, especially let's back Trump bullshit. Some of it is that, and some of it is facts. Like, And like Candace Owens should talk about the infant mortality rate, about Margaret Sanger wanting to kill black babies and shit like that. Yeah, say that. You don't, we don't need you to, to go talk about how Obama ain't shit or how Democrats ain't shit. Talk to us about shit like that. I always say I'm one of the rare people. I can, I can deal with you talking to bullshit, but still pull some decent information out of you. But don't refer to black people as being married to the fucking government. Don't be the amaz- amazing Lucas and then talk about black people and refer to people. Like he'll say, like, this black people that will listen to you. Like, you'll engage them in conversation, they'll talk with you, they'll listen, and then they'll, okay, boom, they'll get it. And they'll start thinking about it. Cool, that's cool to say that. I'm, I don't have an issue with that. But don't go on to clarify that you're not talking to us, you're talking to white people when you say what you say. And the reason I say that is because he then went on to say, and then there are the ignorance. These are the black people that don't want to hear anything you got to say. They're attached to Democrats. They, they only want government handouts. That let me know that you weren't talking to us, you were talking about us to white people and whoever else supports conservative ideals. You weren't talking to us, you were talking about us and expecting us to latch on to what you were saying because you completely just... So basically like, yeah, so basically like sleeping with the enemy in a sense. I mean, I won't say sleeping with the enemy because I don't view white people as the enemy. I view, I view black people like that as more of an enemy than anything because you could be black and be conservative and speak a certain way and not be the fucking enemy. It ain't about that. It's about how you approach the situation of black people when you talk about us when we're not in the room. And that's what he was doing because his his audience, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume is predominantly white. And you're talking in reference to black people like there's some that'll listen yeah, there's some of us that'll listen, and we all know, bro. If you if we if we keep it a buck, we know what goes on in certain cities and certain certain fucking neighborhoods where you like, damn, this is a generation of people who've been in the hood doing hood shit. Like y'all don't see how this ain't how this ain't it. Like stop being comfortable in the ghetto. We know that exists. Right. I'm not saying not to acknowledge it, but don't refer to them to them as the ignorance. You're not even saying they're ignorant. You're already writing them off as people. Maybe it's because people like him with all this knowledge, who've done all this studying, because you don't attempt to communicate in a way that they'll be receptive to. You don't want them to be receptive to you, is my thing. Like, you don't want them to, to receive what you're saying well, or you would refer to them that way. But in order for you to make white people feel comfortable with you, you will shit on your own people that you feel like disagree with you. And, and I get the whole dynamic where, especially for people like, oh, I'm educated because I don't talk like that. I don't act like those Negroes, those type of people. You, you get what I'm saying? It's one thing for, for you to be educated and to like, to, to distance yourself from, from what we believe or what we're being told, the stereotypical black actions and a stereotypical black mind state. It's one thing to, to distance yourself from that or to, to do a complete 180 of that. But don't completely disregard those people because you can reach them. You could change their state of mind with your information if you package it right. But you completely wrote them off to make white people who agree with you feel comfortable. Like, I don't give a fuck if you were old. You were, I was teased by these type of people, whatever, when you were young. You, you're an adult now, okay? Maybe you can be a beacon that lets them know it's okay to speak this way. It's okay. 
you don't have to purposely talk in a, in a way that makes me sound uneducated. Because we know people that that do it on purpose, that they're beyond yep. that. You know what I mean? But they don't have, code switching. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the code exactly code switching. We know people that can that can go both ways, and they tend to. Well, I want to be just this way. This is my comfort zone. Well, f- well fine, be your comfort zone. But for for him to write a bunch of people off like that to me is counterproductive. Wouldn't you want people, especially people in the hood, the people that you tag as ignorant? Don't they need your message the most? That's what we need the biggest revolution in the, in the way of black thinking is, hey, we're all different. We don't have to be this way. You could be conservative. You could be liberal. We can debate about it, but you don't have to be that way. Get involved. It pissed me off right. during the midterm seeing people, I ain't voting for this, for this, that, and the third shit don't change. I'm like, nigga, you just said that you're not going to vote because shit don't change. Well, shit don't change because you don't vote locally, motherfucker. The people that yeah. get in power are put in power because they're representative of what's going on in their uh, civically. You know what I'm saying? In the municipalities, in the cities, in the states, townships, whatever you want to call it, these people get elected because people vote for you them don't, you don't locally. Your opinion. You, don't, you don't vote. That was a... Who was that? It was a, it was a, it was a good friend of mine uh, also made beats and, and whatnot. Uh, Rodney P. out in uh, St. Louis. Shout out to Rodney P. He had uh, posted up one, like, story. It alluded, it alluded to, you know what I'm saying, like, the effects of people when they don't vote are when they think that it does not matter. Basically, the story was about a little, it was a little rat in the farm. There was a rat in the farm, and the rat basically heard that the farmer was going to get something to kill the rat. And basically, the rat went and he told every animal on the farm that, you know what I'm saying, the farmer's trying to kill him. The other animals felt like, oh, well, he's just trying to kill you. It ain't my problem. Whatever, whatever. So he ended up, uh, the farmer ended up buying a snake. The snake ended up, um, the snake ended up biting the wife and ended up getting poisoned. So when the wife ended up getting sick from getting poisoned by the snake, eventually, yes, the snake got the rat. But now he's trying to take care of his wife. So what does the farmer do? The farmer ends up taking care of his wife, and he ends up um, he ends up like making a breakfast and and getting orange juice and all this stuff just to try and you know nurse her back to wellness. The the next animal that ended up leaving was a freaking pig. The pig ended up getting killed just to make the breakfast for her so she can get better and all that, but she didn't get better. She ended up dying. So. They ended up having a funeral. They had a funeral, they had a repast. Now they need something to eat for the repast. So the farmer went back out there. He ended up killing the cow for the beef and everything else for it. Long well, story short, when you think that something really doesn't affect you, somewhere down the road it will. So it probably would benefit you to let that voice be heard. Yeah, I feel you, bro. And that's why I I watch the news. That's why I try to stay informed. Like, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but, like, if you want to realize or understand, like, why you still in the hood, look at how the people that are in power talk about you and they reference you. They don't know what's going on. They're so detached from you and comfortably detached from you that they feel like the decisions they're making are making it better for you because the people that look like you that are speaking up agree with them. They think you're lazy. They think you don't want to do shit. And that's why you have somebody like Candace Owens doing this Blexit shit, which is supposed to be the black exit from the Democratic Party. That's cool. That's cool. I'm not opposed to you doing whatever you want to, like you saying whatever you want to say, but the people there are being left behind because they're seen as ignorant or they don't, they can't understand what I'm saying. Like communicate with them. Talk to him. You say it's 400% business ownership for black is owned as as rich as 400%. Say that on the platform around black people. You on Russell Brand podcast talking about this shit. Work your way to BET. 
I'm not mad at you going around the college campuses and shit, but people need you in the community centers in the ghetto. That's who's getting the fucking abortions you're talking about. That's where yeah. it's happening. Work your way there. But no, you getting these white people dollars so it doesn't benefit you to do that. It benefits you to talk to black college students. No issue with that. But don't forget about the people who can't afford to go to college or maybe didn't earn the money to go to college. You going around the black colleges to, to colleges and speaking to people, but then you're talking about the school system is trash. So get to the people that the school system is failing before they get to the college level. But you don't make your money that way. So I just be seeing through shit, man. That's why I wanted to ask you that question to see where you was at and how you felt about it, man, because that's something that's been bothering me for a while. And I talked about it like repetitively um, on this podcast, man. But like still, like I, I feel like I had to get it out. It's, it's therapeutic. Like I have to go through um, life right now watching um, this current president who is the skid mark on the underwear of U.S. history right now go through Good analogy. the media cycle and uh, be supported by people. It, it's crazy to me. It is, it's crazy. It's like watching the guy who beat his wife and all his friends are getting in trouble going to jail because he beat his wife up. But then there's people supporting him like, no, well, no, he didn't hit her that hard. He hit her that hard because of this. Yeah. That's how I feel about that shit. It, it's, Almost like enabling. And it's like, and not just any friend, women. Like, that's the wild part, man. Um, two more quick questions for you before we get into this music, because this is going longer than I thought. <laughs> what if the Saha the Prince song, New Africa, what if that came true? And all the successful liberal blacks, and all, well, I'd say all the blacks, migrated back to Africa. And all the, the super successful liberal blacks, we talk about doing shit for the community financially, what if they took it and all did it back to Africa? What do you think? How would that affect the world? Some parts of the world, it probably would benefit greatly. Other parts of the world will be looking like what Africa, how they see Africa now. Because we, like, we we'll we we'll keep it a, we'll keep it a, a, a real bucket. We already know, or for those who are well educated enough, already know. Eighty five to ninety percent, and this is just this this is like an underestimation. A good eighty to ninety percent of all things used throughout the world, let alone the U S. was inspired invented and created by people of color. Mm -hmm. So, if everyone had to give everything up that was inspired, invented, or created by people of color, and all of that came from out of Africa, Black Panther would be a real Black Panther would be real life. We we'll, we'll just put it like that. The movie Black Panther would be real life. Well, I don't know about the suit. Um, the suit. I don't know about the suit and all that flipping and shit. But. Well, <laughs> not so much of the flipping and stuff. Yeah, but sorry. yeah, Wakanda would be real. Wakanda would be so real. Word. Because of so much of science, technology, engineering, mathematics that black people. Uh, and people of color, period, know of, they're familiar with. It's just that it's been taught within ways to where it makes it difficult for 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 a lot of people to grasp. Or, or it, it it comes out as at first as being something boring, and basically is almost like downgraded or not not downgraded, but down talked upon as. It's not cool, or it's 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 too boring. When in actuality, if you really look at the big picture, if you have it and you're entertained by it, 
It can't be too boring. I mean, but you're using. Yeah, but that's a cultural thing that we got to do on our end. It was like, and I know we talking yeah, about if we exactly. all went back, but that's something we can do, like now when the states like think about it, if um, if the majority of African Americans, right, black people, if we adopted the stereotypical, right, mentality of Nigerians, like, oh, you only got one degree. <laughs> I don't know how many Nigerians oh, you come yeah. across, and just like if we adopted the mentality of Nigerians in the United States, I think oh shit would God. be crazy. America would be, yeah, America would be in so much trouble if that. No, was, America that would. I think we would benefit, though. We would definitely we would benefit as a country. We would we benefit. Would benef- yeah, we we would benefit. We would benefit from it, but also within that, you also have to know and understand if if we get to that level to where it's that much knowledge, learning, and understanding, wouldn't you think that the person who has that much knowledge and understanding would go back to originally where they came from? Because look at it within the bigger picture of this way, too. You see many and plenty of other ethnicities or nationalities that come into the United States just for the opportunity to learn what it is that they can learn. And when they do learn everything that they feel would be beneficial towards their country, Nine times out of ten, they go back to their country and they benefit or, or share those benefits from being over here. Well, yeah, but that's that's one thing that we got to get past also is the way we view Africa as black people in America. Or we have to go I, do I our own. I definitely will agree with you on that. But, we have again, to. That's, that's why I ended up saying what I ended up saying. Like, if we actually knew and actually had the true knowledge of the country. Well, let's keep let's continent. let's keep it a bean though. Let's keep it a bean. Like that's something that's on us. You know, you and me in our thirties that we have the internet, bro. There's no ex- there's no excuse for that. So right. that's something I have. I'm working on myself is like getting the most the most uh, information I can when I can, and be like, okay, let me find out a way to get this to my daughter so she can see that, hey, we live here. We've been here for generations but this is the or our origin country you know you can say your friend down the street oh she's mexican well this is what black people come from we come from this we come from this continent and our our lineage or our, our dna is broken up over these areas in the in the continent from these countries that's why for me it was a big deal to do my ancestry shit so that i could show her oh, that yeah. you know my um you know my wife she did hers too so that one day we could sit down and be like hey this is what your makeup is this is what, this is what we are. This is where we come from, and uh, I think that black awakening is slowly is starting, but I think it's it's just not um, it's not resonating all the way down to the age group it needs to get down to. I think before all the Donald Trumps and all this other shit, we were figuring out like, hey, this all this shit is cool, but we need to own businesses. That way, we can't be fired by these motherfuckers for wearing our hair a certain way and want to dress and be a certain way and want to talk a certain way. And I think that these things are happening now that we, the more things are being opened up to creators and shit like that. That's why it's like, I'm at a point where like, I'm trying to not shit, especially like even when it comes to music on shit that the young guys are doing because they paving their own way, which is what we want them to do. Like, I feel like it's easier to get on now Right? Some people say it's harder to get on because to see if people that can get up and get on the internet and upload their shit, their music is is a greater right. percentage because of how easy it is. But I still think it's it's easier to get on because you can do that. Like somebody's gonna get paid at these record companies, it's gonna be paid to sift through these sound clouds and all the shit to pick up the next person that's coming up. You're not having to go to New York or go to LA or go to Atlanta or go to Houston to go to Miami, you're not having to pick up and go nowhere. You could do this shit in your in your fucking bedroom. And put the shit on not mixed, whatever, and put the shit on SoundCloud. And if there's raw talent potential and all that shit there, it could be picked up and then you could be snatched up somewhere. Or you could just do it yourself. And not have to worry about it. The spirit of independence is is strong right now. And and I'm even though I don't like the music as much. I'm happy that this, these kids can go out and start doing their tours on their own shit and um, not having to be stuck waiting on somebody at a record label to recognize, you know, what they feel like their talent is. And um, 
just real quick to get into the music shit. I talked to one of my partners on Facebook the other day, and he was talking about I like that, you know, like the the trap shit or whatever. He basically said I like that. Cause he he had something up like, hey, if you don't have a music degree, don't tell me that X Y Z and X Y Z is trash. And then I hit him with, okay, well, half your playlist doo doo. And he hit me <laughs> with something like, listen, I don't want to be into my feelings and all that shit if I hear this. I said, well, all lyrical, all good rap ain't about that shit. I said, you just got to know what to look for. He said, but I don't. Then he was like, well, I don't hear that when I go out. I'm like. On a, on a radio or whatever, I'm like, you ever thought about why that is? There's a reason for that, that I've gotten into here. I ain't gonna get into all that now because we already laid into this, but like, he's like, yeah, I know, but I just don't be hearing it like that. I'm like, well, maybe you should look. It's kind of what I told him. Because it's your brain, it's your yeah. mentality. It's what, you, it's what you feed yourself is negativity all the time because there's nobody that's on the radio a lot that's gonna tell you to do something positive for yourself. But... That's just something I had I had to get off and talk to him about real quick. I had another question. This is I want to make this one quick and then we can move on to this music shit because I know you're getting close to having a role. Um, what was I going to ask you? Okay. What if the cure for AIDS is found in one of these shithole countries? <laughs> the cure for cancer. The cure for cancer, the cure for AIDS is, is found in one of these shit old countries. And the next, you know. Yeah. If it's found within one of these shit old countries, then I would say, I would say for this. And and let the record also show that myself, all blackout, we don't think of these countries as shit old countries. At all. We're just quoting, we're, we're, we're just quoting what someone ended up saying. But we, I, one, don't think that you guys are shithole countries. I Not think at you all. Guys are you have so much culture and diversity within it. And for right now, I would do anything just to be back in one of these quote unquote shithole countries. But it, it, not to deviate too far from what it was that you were asking, my brother. What would I, what, what if it was found within one of those shithole countries? I would say the person who ended up finding it within those countries. Help their people first, and basically, if, if if it's if it's one of the continents that is found upon to where they think it's a shithole country, just go ahead and 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 tax the fuck out the other countries, are the yeah the other places outside of the quote unquote shithole country. And if they if they're gonna do all of that, you know what I'm saying? And and, and I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't want to be a person to advocate do evil for evil, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying? It's only it's only so many times or only so many people that you can extend the knowledge branch to. You know what I mean? So like for 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 people who think it's a shithole country, all right. Don't have don't have the disease that, that this shithole country found a cure for. Yeah, and that because was that was basically every, my point. Every, everyone yeah, because everyone it's a lot of people, a good amount of people, who believe in a heaven or hell. And for those who do, the biggest thing that they don't want to do to get to heaven is die. They want to try and live as long as they possibly can. Well, with you doing the, the stuff that you're doing, I mean, you just shorten that lifespan for it. And if you really think that, you know, what the cure it is that you're going to live forever, good luck on that. Yeah. Good luck in trying to get in. Good luck trying to get it. Because, <laughs> seriously, if it, was, if it was left to me, man, oh, you think I'm a shit old country, huh? Yeah, y'all last Guess on the what? list. <laughs> <laughs> y'all last on the list till I get my shit hold this during the way. And I realize it's like some pie in the sky shit to say, right? Like, because a lot of these uh, <laughs> countries he was talking about lack the resources or whatever. That don't mean there's not great minds there. And that's just... I don't that's just like, what if there's like a new energy source found? Just something new that will benefit humanity on the whole. Like, what if it comes up in a place that you've created conflict with for no reason other than you can't watch your goddamn mouth? And you and you were just talking about how there's some, you know, there's a significant amount of people that believe in, you know, like an afterlife where you go to the good place or you go to the bad place. It's like, you got to think about it. 
during your daily life is like, listen, am I willing to live with my resume, right? And my my life resume, I'm not even talking about your job. Like your yeah. moral resume, am I, am I willing to live with this in the event that whatever is true? Like, cause nobody's 100%, I, 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 I seriously doubt that anybody's 100% good or bad. I feel like everybody lives in the in-between and you, you do what you can to take care of you and the ones you care about and you make mistakes here or there, but that's life, right? You're going to have these moments where you're like, man, fuck that, fuck him, fuck her. I'm about me right now. And he was like, hey, you know what? Fuck me. I'm thinking about everybody else. We all had these moments. I think it's a normal thing to go through. But I'm just saying, be, be, make sure you can live with your resume. Like, don't, like they say, don't, camp, exactly. don't campaign for shit you don't want. And it's with the streets and all that. You deal with the young kids and all that shit. And, I'm, and um, like the little Twitter spat I got into when I said something about the little boy who knew all the ad libs and um, to like a Amigo song. And I was like, does he know his ABCs? That's on my resume now, but I can live with that because I don't think that that's um, something negative that I did, even though people were comments saying, oh, I bet you're funny at parties or whatever. I'm like, or you worry about your own kid. I'm like, I'm worried about all the kids because that's my resume. <laughs> like my resume, I'm worried about all black kids. I'm worried about all kids all over the world. You know, I'm worried about kids that look like me the most importantly right now because our situation ain't ain't great, right? When the situation evens out, they're not going to worry the same amount about all kids. But it's like, I, I'm worried about all the kids. I'm worried about you. And that's just something I got to, ain't like, oh, I got to live with this, something I, I embrace because that's the type of person I am. Does he know his ABCs, though? Because you you put this your son on the internet for your personal gain. Nothing you did benefited your son. What you did was put him on the internet doing some what you thought was some cute shit, had him listening to the unedited version of this music, and then knowing what all the ad libs is, telling me that he's listened to this shit multiple times, and you listened to it multiple times. He heard the same shit over and over and over if you can time the ad libs exactly. But does he know his ABCs? I feel like that's a fair question since you put him in the public eye. And people got mad at me. And then somebody said, old heads always hating. And my reply to that is like, well, I'm sorry, I'm still alive. But I was like, that, like, uh, are you mad at me because I'm not dead yet? Because I can only keep living. Like my, my whole goal in life is to be an old head. I hope that's your goal too, is to be an old head. So you can be mad, be bitter about me and talk about rap music and shit like we about to right now. So, bro, since it's running along already and I know you got shit to do. I know you got shit to do, bro. Let's go ahead and get into this music shit real quick. <laughs> Real quick, like, all right. So, all right. I don't, uh, I don't really want to get into. Uh, I don't know if I really want to get into the, the Grammy type shit, but I think I, I think I'll give it a whirl. No, so, actually, actually, we can, cause, cause I remember seeing something on on, on Twitter that um, that you ended up mentioning, and this will be a perfect time to educate everyone who don't know about what is going on within the world of Grammys and how everything is is, is done, all right? So we're going to get to the meat and potatoes of this. Well, you go ahead with that Everybody shit, has- and then I ask you my questions. Yeah. So go ahead with you, because you, I was asking, like, why do we give a fuck about the Grammys? Is that what you're talking about? Why does well, it matter? And who decides who it, gets it, nominated? It go with, it, yeah, it can go within that, but it, it, it's more within it as well. All right, so with the Grammys... With the Grammys, if you are a musician or an artist, the reason why you would want to give a fuck about the Grammys is because this is not like a popularity contest. These are these awards are coming from your they are coming from your colleagues, those that you consider your peers within the industry as a whole. You know what I mean? Uh, a couple of years back, or uh, within the past, we'll say fifty something years or something like that. Uh, basically, they 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 were kind of on the we'll say the segregated side. It wasn't up until like what the late eighties, early nineties, when they start incorporating hip hop within it. And even then, they were still giving like hip hop the short end of the stick. Wasn't televised and shit like All that. Of- yeah, at the very end, uh, while it's on commercial, if you're not there at the Grammys. But they're actually making a turn, and it's 
coming in for the better now. Um, what a lot of people don't really know is, as far as like hip hop part of it is concerned, they are actually reaching out to more people um, within the genre of hip hop, rap, urban music. Period, and and actually having them to be a part of the the um, voter, the the voting committee within it, because basically now with everything being so independent and whatnot, like. Believe it or not, if you're making music, it's a way for you to get to be a part of the voting committee for the Grammys. Only thing you have to do is just release something within the time frame that that they are actually, you know, looking um, to do the nominations and whatnot. And I think that's sometime between, if, I, if I'm remembering this correctly, and I should because I'm a part of the Recording Academy. Um, it's anywhere between. Um, Late October of one year, or late October, November of one year, going into the the summer or the fall of the of the following year. So everything that was nominated for a Grammy for this year, it had to be released from the end of 2017 up until now, or not like now, now, but we'll say. Early November. So like a fiscal schedule. Late October. Yeah. So fiscally. Basically. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when they end up doing that, then they they will send out, they, they will first get in, get in contact with everyone a part of the Recording Academy's voting committee. All right. So a lot of, a lot of great projects came out this year. A lot of, you know, somewhat great projects but basically they fell to the wayside from you know the 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 consumer side of things but who is it that you feel deserves an award for the, the, uh, any type of project that they ended up releasing oh well I think that this was phenomenal this should get an award oh yeah I think that should get an award too alright so we got two people who agree on this project whatever the hell it is to, to to be nominated for well what do you think what do you think what what what's so good about it? Oh well, you know, for them to be a new artist or whatever, they're doing all of this, this is fucking phenomenal. Alright, so we'll make them as the best new artist. Or we'll make it as the best album of the year. Or best song of the year, best feature, best duo, whatever, whatever. But these are from people within that respective genre community who pretty much give these people that acclamation. So that would be the importance of it. And just within hip hop in general, Night Wonder is a part of the voting committee. I think Young Guru is a part of the uh, voting committee. And it's a couple of other people. I think they just put Quest Love within it. I could be wrong within that. But the people who are a part of it, as far as like hip hop and, and rap is concerned, one, that they're, they're not like biased old heads. So we can dare that shit too for anybody who, who's thinking that because if that was the case, the chance the rapper wouldn't have one. You know what I mean? I mean, I, well, he's a he's exceptionally dope though. You get what I'm saying? Like, that, that's yeah, true. Yeah. You can't yeah, you can't deny that. But for what it is, and, and and for the point of the matter is like it's not some old white dude or whatever that came in being like, oh yeah, well this is dope, this is not dope. These are people within the genre, within that respective community that are voting for it. And then at the same time, for anything else that is outside of that community, they will get a pamphlet and information about it and a link to either listen to the song if they haven't heard it or watch certain parts of it because uh, nah, it's all music. No one. So they, they would they will have something to basically have them informed about it. Um, when when I was in school, I actually got to talk with one of the voting members of the Grammy, and he let us see exactly what it was that, you know what I'm saying, they do, and how they go about with them doing it. That's how I ended up becoming a, a part of the uh, Recording Academy. I can't be a part of the voting the voting committee yet until I end up releasing something for for um, a major release, so quote unquote a major release. 
I'll put something out. It's a major release. A lot of people get it. A lot of people hear about it. Things like that. And that'll be great. One of the things that they ended up amending to it now is that independent artists can now be nominated for grants. Hence why Chance the Rapper ended up winning his. Word. So, yeah. So, that would, that would be um, pretty much just a little a little bit more of an understanding of the Grammy, the importance of it, and, and what have you. So this, this, like you can you can voice your opinion, but unless you actually contribute to something within the music industry, like your vote wouldn't matter. Your specific vote as a consumer would not matter. I mean, my vote does matter if I buy the album, though. If I buy, it, buy it, if I stream, it, if I buy yeah, it, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, like they, they'll look at yeah they'll look at certain things like that they'll look at, they'll look at certain things like that they'll look at look at the quality of the content and then like what is it that that makes it so phenomenal what makes it stand out to where somebody will want to nominate I mean Are people see it and yeah no. you could do reviews on anything at this point so I have a follow up question yeah. to that to that uh, prior question shouldn't in my opinion. We look at it like this. What if the uh, energy and the people that were focused on the Grammys, coming from like a hip hop, R and B side, what's, I'll give you the blanket urban music, right? Okay. What if all those heavyweights were more focused on the fucking Soul Train Music Awards than the Grammys? If they were focused. More so yeah, on, on just, things like that. Just like, music just like the new Africa concept. Yeah. Like, hey, this was fun. It was cute. We did it for a while. That was great. We're going to shift all this towards BET, Soul Train type shit. BET is BET. That's some whole different yeah. shit, a whole different discussion. We're going to yeah. shift all this towards the Soul Train Awards. The Soul Train Okay. You know Soul what I'm saying? Soul Train Awards, the NAACP, Image Awards, those things that basically, they, they focus more so on people of color. So basically, what would end up happening is it would be the same thing. Uh, it, it pretty much goes hand in hand with what it is that I was saying with in regards to the Africa question. Uh, we would have to put that value within it. That, We're that, so quick to try and get... That's exactly you know, what so I'm saying. To try and get that's exactly like I we keep and it's like it's not like I'm opposing any of this shit. Like eventually I want everything to be kinda of same playing, but it's like, hey, I keep coming and knocking on your door, right? And you say, Oh yeah, you can come in. And then you tell me, hey, you know what? You come in, bring a couple friends. Now you like, you know what, we really like what you're doing. Bring more of your friends in. But it's like, damn, the more of us come over here, we not at home no more. How about this? Exactly. How about you start coming to our house. That that's what I'm saying. Like, wouldn't it be dope if it's the same people that go to this award show go to this award show? I'm not saying you gotta leave, but let's let's do pop music over here at the Soul Train Awards. So now you got to come over here if you want these these other awards. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because they got Billboard Music Awards, they got iHeart Radio Awards, fucking Grammys, some other yeah. shit. Like, hey, well, we want y'all to come to the you got MTV fucking music awards. Nah, we want y'all to come to the BET Awards, the Soul Train Awards, the NAACP Awards. We're gonna nominate some of y'all. So y'all get to come over here and see what this is like. I'm just saying, wouldn't yeah. it be, you know, Pine and Sky, oh, like I said before. Fuck. If you really want to cross brand things. But I'm, I want to move on real quick so we can, because like I said, this is running longer than we thought it would. All right, man. Um, Do you have a new artist of the year for your personal? Because I don't think I have one this year. Like a new artist that you, like a new artist this year that just came out. A new, uh, well, he, he, he's, I would say he's somewhat new in a sense, but he's not too, too, too new. Uh, it would be J.I.D. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just heard his song, Hot Box. Oh, yeah. That shit is that dope. Shit I just awesome. heard it, yeah. 
Yeah. But, uh, that shit is a monster. Like, I like J.I.D. Actually, I, I like the roster that Dreamville has, period. Like, J.I.D. Is, is, is raw as hell. Boss is, is dope as fuck. I didn't know he and, was Dreamville. Uh, oh, yeah. Boss, J.I.D., J. Cole, and the, the other artists are slipping me right now. And I'm... I'm horrible as hell, but between me listening to a whole bunch of music and then creating shit on my own and whatnot, like, yeah, my, my head is fucking gone to a fricassee I feel with, you. with all that shit. But, uh, yeah, J.I.D. definitely uh, ran my attention for a new artist. Okay. I'm with that. I heard a lot of good things about Homie. Uh, for me... I'm gonna be 100% honest with you, bro. I gotta keep it a bean. Like, I haven't really listened to anybody new. So, if I'm being 100% honest, if I have a new artist of the year, it's the homie Weeks. And I'm not, and I'm just being, <laughs> I just went and looked at my, my shit. I can, I can see that. I I'm, I'm looking that. at it, like, and for me, like, certain factors, you know, certain things factor when I look at artists and what I like and what I support, whatever, but for me, I know the shit in music is real because I know homie personally. Like, I can pick, him, pick up the phone and call him. That's my bro. Yeah. Um, he got his homeboys on the records, which I also would like. But he put out, I want to say, what, two, three projects in a year? Yeah, two, three. Uh, two, three projects yeah, three in projects, a year. Three projects, almost like eight, nine singles throughout the whole year. Yeah, yeah. So, and each, yeah. each project got like project. 10 or more songs on there? Yeah. In the, and, in the and year? One of, one of the songs on there, yeah, that's what I was about to say. One of the songs on there, I produce. That's what I'm saying. Like, you looking out, you got the homies on records with you, bro. You grinding, and you put out three projects in a year. And I like a lot of the shit that's on there. Maybe it's because that's my homie. But that's that's my, that's really my artist, of, my new artist of the year. Is uh, my new, well, hip hop artist of the year is my homeboy Weez, cause, just because I know the amount of work he put in, then with his schedule, him being in and out. It's impressive. And you're doing oh, a lot yeah. of this shit on your own and you meet with these labels and all this other shit that I won't really discuss, but I feel like yeah. that's that's dope. And that's my that's my artist. That's my artist of the year, man. My new artist of the year. Do you have a um shout out to weeks. Yeah, for for definitely shout out to Weeks. Do you have a a um a single of the year? A hip hop single of the year. A hip hop single of the year. Damn, there's so many of them motherfuckers. Yeah, I know. It is so many of them. Um, and just, just like, and I'm talking what? about just general, like, 100% honest. I think this was the one song this year that had shit on lock. Ooh. Yeah, I know. I would say, out for me. Honestly, I would say the one song that, that, that had it like that for me, like no bullshit, it'll be J Rock's win. Yeah. Um I mean that, Yeah. Every time you hear that, you you can't help but the fucking move and start singing along with the damn hook. Oh yeah, he made the perfect song for when you in traffic trying to get the fucking work. <laughs> 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 he made the perfect song for that. Like um I, that's actually I got that tied with another song, and this is like it's when and it's one because like once when died down, this song picked up, at least for me because I don't get tired of listening to when I said I cut it off before I get tired, but the other song is Sicko Mode, Travis Scott song. That's my oh, other yeah, song I love of the, the year. To that. Um, I, I love the opening to that. Yeah, that, that um, shit goes. Hard. That shit is hard. Then when it drops and the, and the beat switches, um. I love Sickle Mode. Yeah. I have listened to that shit several times and I have not got, um, I haven't got tired of listening to it yet. And I was thinking like, you know what? It's probably, um, what's the, what's the song, Kiki? You know the Drake song? Oh, um, uh, In My Feelings? I don't, I don't follow Drake. Nah, that's, that's not In My Feelings. That's, uh. That is it, right? That's the song with the dance, yeah. right? That is isn't my feelings, nigga. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that <laughs> you had me over here thinking I'm tripping. Like, I, like that song with the dance and all that shit, but, like, 
You get tired of that shit. Sicko mode, I can cut that shit on any time. J Rock cut them two songs. Those are my two songs of the year. Right there. Off rip. Do you have a sleeper song of the year? There's <laughs> way too many of them. But like just being the person that I am. For what yeah. for your personality, what song that you just say for your personal? Song that you wouldn't my Yeah, like for you came out of nowhere, like, oh shit, I think I would like this. That's why it's a sleeper, bro. <laughs> it's not one of those songs. Yeah, um, God, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to remember the name of it. it and it's going. It's going to hit me at the last fucking minute because it always do. It, but it is. It's dope as fuck because of how it begins and basically how he arranged it. I okay. was just like, yo, this is this is a. Uh, this, this right here is a, it, it's dope as fuck. Cause it, it's very calming. And as soon as it comes in, it's just like, could it be? That was the name of the song. Okay. Word, I haven't could heard it, it. I'm about to check it out. Could it be? Yeah. Oh. It, it, it was, I was just like, yo, this, this shit is fucking killer. This shit is good. I just like how it how it uh started, cause it, it starts out and it's very simplistic, and it sound it, it almost sounds like world music, cause then like you hear the vocals come in and it uh, sounds like you're saying something like something African. Okay. I, I don't know if it's African or not, but it just sounds dope. And then like the the bass drum and the bass line and the groove from the kick, it just comes in and. It, you just like can't help but nod to that shit. Word. It's like one of those hip hop cypher type beats. Oh, okay, that's dope. Yeah, I'm about to check it out. Yeah. I'm about to send me the link or something. I'll look it up. Yeah. Check yeah. it out before it, they... it's, 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 Yeah, it's, it's dope as fuck. I just love the beat to it. The okay. beat is, like, I get lost within that damn beat. Oh, wow, okay. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's that damn dope. That beat, that beat is fucking killer. I love that shit. Okay, I think for me, my sleeper song of the year will be um, Black Balloons off of Denzel Curry's album. The Taboo album, I, th I think I would have, normally I wouldn't check for Denzel Curry, but for some reason on the whim, I said, you know what, let me see what he's talking about. And I got through, yeah. and I listened to Black Balloons because it's melodic. I think um, the dude Gold Link is on that song as well, but Black Balloons is my junk. So if you get a chance to listen to it, that's what it is. My sleeper song of the year. Because I got a... Oh, okay. Yeah, Black Balloon. I just... Because I wouldn't expect it to listen to like anything from that artist because I saw him on that one freestyle and I was like... Oh, yeah, but yeah. Even, even within that one freestyle, he still held his own. Well, yeah. Within within that within that whole little caliber, within that whole little tier, he, he, was, he was the one that stood out the best. Yeah, oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Do you have a um, do you have a album of the year? I got two. Once again, I got two. But do you have an album of the year? I know it's hard. I would have, I would have two, and surprisingly enough, one of the two will probably be one that you you probably have not even thought of. But and this is gonna shock a lot of people too. I don't give a shit. But the first one. Would be Invasion of Privacy from Cardi B. Okay. 
I heard a lot of people and, say that. And yeah, and and this is why I would say that too, because while everyone is is thrilled and and just like yeah, the shit was like truly dope. She's made history with that album alone, so she's got a lot to come up with for her sophomore album. But just for right now, the invasion of privacy. Every last one of the songs on that album has been certified gold or platinum. That's dope. Every last one of them. That's dope. And she is, and and she is the only female artist to do that. Nobody before her, nobody right now. She is the only one that did that. That's hype. And and yeah, and, and even within even within thinking about that, it's like damn. That's a big move because no man has done that. None. The closest would be Jay Z, but even even he fell short to that. Damn. So that says that that yeah that says a lot. Go ahead, that Cardi. Says a whole fucking lot. Go ahead, Cardi. Huh? I said, go ahead, Cardi. She, she yeah she's slowly but surely making herself into a household name, and despite the little bullshit that her and her husband Offset is going through. Like the way that she is taking it to the chin, no pun intended, taking it to the chin and, and wow. basically <laughs> bouncing back from it. Yeah, I, I, I know that was kind of fucked up, but still, it, it'll be somebody out there to be like, damn, nigga, you had to say it like that? But no, the shit that's going on between her and him, she's not letting that interfere with the momentum that she has going. And like, People can say whatever the hell it is that they want with that her shit from love and hip hop and whatnot. Honestly speaking, with the shit that she's doing right now, I can give a fuck. I can give a fuck less about what it is that she did on love and hip hop because truth, because even more truth be told, this is an artist who was on love and hip hop that y'all seen grind. Yeah, she did some ratchet shit, but she grinded her ass off to get to where she's at. Oh. And, and nobody can take that. Nobody can take that from her. Well, I don't so watch that shit, so I don't phone. know. <laughs> I don't watch it, so I wouldn't know. I I watched I watched a little bit of it when she was on there. She was doing she was doing some some all out ratchet ass shit. It was funny as fuck, but that was her. That was her then. Should I say that was her then? Because the way that she has transformed and transcended into this artist is like damn, like. Yeah, she she really has so she really have something to prove, and she's doing a she's doing a kick ass job of it. And and like seeing something like that, it's like damn, like you gotta respect her husband. Oh yeah, you gotta respect the husband. You gotta respect the grind, her work ethic. And then I was like, it was a, a clip that somebody had posted up when she was doing the uh, the carpool karaoke. And after I saw that, I was like. She, she actually transcended into something bigger than her, and it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm truly happy for her, and I'm like, she she definitely has won me over as a supporter and a fan for every damn thing that she does. It may be some time where she falls to the wayside or whatever, and she do some shit like, damn, why, why the fuck did you do that? But she bounces back like, fuck, that's impressive, like, any any scandals and shit that she's been in and she's been into what two so far? The, the shit with Nicki Minaj at the fashion show and then you know the the shit with uh, her husband. But outside of that, it's like damn, like you really shining. Go ahead, girl. Go ahead. Glow. The glow up is real. It is every ounce of real in that bitch. So that's that's my one album. The second one definitely would be no news is good news from Fonte. Didn't that come out last year? No, that came out at the beginning of this year. That came out at the beginning of this year? Yep. It came uh, out uh damn. late January. I thought that came out last year. That was a that was a good album. That's yeah, pretty good. That, it was, that, it was that, short that but it was good. Yeah, that and, and that's what it is that I had to get over. Because of me being so much of a hip hop, uh, a hip hop head, and knowing how busy this nigga gets behind the mic, 
it was like, damn, nigga, I feel robbed. Like, it was great, but at the same time, it was like, nigga, I feel robbed. When I got to when I got to the very last track of this album, it was like, you made it to the end of this. Congratulations. You made it. I was like, what? You son of a fuck. But again, it it was dope. And it was actually like one concept that I actually was thinking on with 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 them making an album because yeah, uh, people's attention spans has gotten shorter. So for him to do what it is that he did with ten tracks and then all of it just pulling it out to 33 minutes. Yeah, that's pretty goddamn yeah, good. Yeah. Do you have any... Uh, yeah, it was released. Go ahead. It was released. Yep. Yeah, it was released uh, 2018, early March. 2018. March. I just looked it up. March 2nd, 2018. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's wild. Do you have a sleeper album <laughs> that somebody might have slept on? Uh, a sleeper album that somebody might have slept on for this year. Yeah, I just created that uh, category because that Fonte album is my sleeper album of the year because I forgot it came out this year. <laughs> it came out. I thought I was yeah. thinking it came out last year. That's crit. I was thinking about it came out at the end of last year. But yeah, yeah Fonte shit came out. I it think, was dope. Uh, yeah, I, uh, honestly, honestly, my sleeper album of the year. Nah, it was a lot. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say it because it's a lot of people. Because I had I had a, a, a talk with somebody on Facebook about this. Um, it was somebody who. Damn it, nah, nah, that was something else. All right, so my sleeper album would be. Uh, I want to say. Yeah, I'll see if I will be the Book of Ryan. It definitely will be that, the Book of Ryan. That's a good pick. Who wants to find out? That's a good pick. Because there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people who say, you know, oh yeah, a Royce the Five Nine is, is, is dope as fuck. But I, 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 I go to question them, what was the last song that they heard? And they draw a blank. They draw a blank. I asked them, did you know, that he ended up releasing an album this year. And they, the, the expressions that I would get or the replies that I would get would be equivalent to a deer being caught in headlights. Hmm. Damn. And it's like, you, yeah, it's like, how can you say somebody's dope and you haven't even listened to anything from him, let alone know what the last thing that, that, that he came out with? The only thing that most people know of is Oh yeah, he was about to get into a a, a, a fucking a, a fucking rap beef with with Tory Lane, which he would have mopped the floor with his ass. Like, man, and, and I made that I made that vocally clear. Yeah, gonna watch what he gonna watch what he do. He comes for smoke. He gonna die of cancer. And I'm telling you right now, that is not what you want. Nah, not what you, want. you need to work focus on your R and B flips, man. That's what you focus on. <laughs> you don't want that. That's a good pick, though. That's a really good album. That's, and as I could definitely see somebody having that as their album of the year. Um, for me, my album of the year, one of my two was uh, definitely Redemption, the J-Rock album. And uh, that album was dope, top to bottom. Um, and for me, there's other albums on the same par. Like Nipsey's album was fucking great. But that was fucking phenomenal. It was bro. a dope ass makes, album. What makes his what makes his shit so dope is he released his shit. He uh, I don't mean, I don't mean to call it like shit, but he released his project within that same week Black Panther was coming out. So it was like the month of February, the month of February this year. Black people had a lot to process and to digest and be happy within the digestion process of it from Black Panther to Victory Lap and and then um, seeing everything or, or seeing Black Panther so quickly within the Avengers uh, Infinity War. Yeah. But uh, 
that it was good. Not only reason like it's not like victory lap ain't my like my album of the years because I expect this from Nipsey. Like he got a certain style of making music which has changed over this, but he always always has these albums that are like really really dope. That's the only reason I don't have it as my album of the year like over with J Rock or with J Rock. J Rock's album to me was like it told the story of how he almost died on a motorcycle accident. He gave some background yeah. of where he came from and like where he's at now. I think is dope because he's been trying to find a sound that will work on like a like a national stage because you know he's blood from LA and what he was doing before is gonna resonate there. But he found out a way to get on the national stage and he ended up having his anthem with Win, which that shit was everywhere. And I think about yeah. when the boxers DeAndre DeAndre uh, Wilder came out to it. I've seen it used on like NBA, like NBA 2K and all this shit. Like to see that song everywhere. You know it's going to be around for the playoffs, NBA playoffs and all that shit. I think it was great for him to have that song for that label because of the way they do things at that label. I just think it was yeah. a real so good it, look it, for the it, label. It, it fits. And it's just him um, in it, continuing in his development, going straight from straight rhyming and all that shit to using his voice different ways and collaborating with different people. So I just think that uh, that album was uh, it was big for him. And that's somebody I've been following since uh, the Follow Me Home album came out, which I thought was pretty good that people didn't really get to. And another thing about the album I liked is that you constantly see Kendrick standing next to him, which I think is great because him and Kendrick got they start like around the same time. From what I know, J-Rock was the first album on, he was the first artist on TDE, and then Kendrick yep. came after. So to see Kendrick still stand next to him and do what he can to, you know, to kind of rub off you know what I'm saying? To bring yeah. some of that Kendrick or Lamar awareness awareness to J Rock, I think is really dope, and it's fun for me to well, see that even, them to to, to yeah. them to keep on going forward and him doing this thing, man. So I think that was really dope. So that's why that's one of my yeah. choices. Yeah, and even even within that, like actually, that whole camp is very, 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 very very sure. oriented, close knit because for every sure. last one of them from Black Hippie was on there. My favorite song on that album was Redemption with uh, Scissor because just because of yeah him telling the story and then basically what it is that he learned and and how does it fit within him getting that redemption so to speak for him and and yeah like that that song I, I gravitated towards Scissor on the hook like I actually caught goosebumps with her singing it. Maybe it was because of how they captured the recording. Maybe it was because I was able to hear how much her emotion ended up translating through the chorus. But, like, that was, like, the second hardest song on there for me. He had some hard ones. Yeah, he did. He did. Like, Am I? Those two, yeah, those two truly, truly stood out the most. Oh, for sure. My second album, my other album of the year, is Astro World, man. Travis Scott's having a big <laughs> year. Like that's that's some shit I did not expect to like because all that auto tune and all this something it's nothing I really listen to for the most part. But something yeah. told me, like, you know what? I ended up really liking um what's this song he got with Kendrick Lamar? Travis Scott. Goosebumps. Like, the more I heard that song, the more I liked it. So I'm, I said, you know, let me look and see what this kid has got going on. So before, I think I heard Butterfly, Butterfly Effect was a single that came out after it. But once I got the album, I said, let me listen to this album. And I was like, you know, sonically, how they say, the sounds around the album and all the beats and all the shit, the melodies, before the lyrics with this artist. So I listened to it. I'm like, okay, buddy can rap. He's not like, you know, lyrical miracle type of guy, but he can rap. He's not a terrible rapper. There's a lot of those, and I can point at one and be like, that guy's a terrible rapper. Travis Scott is not a terrible rapper. So I get to listen to the album, and I'm like, man, this guy's this guy's all right. Who's, who's ever in his camp with him to help him put together this album or whoever mentored him to be in the spot where he can put together an album like this, they did a good goddamn job because he put together a dope album. If you want to ride and listen to shit and, uh, and, just, and just kick it, and you like the melodies and all that shit, now at times the auto tune is like, all right, man, I can skip a song or two here and there, but for the most part, I can let it rock. And the song that got me the most on the album was Houston Fornication. I thought that was that's my favorite song on the album. But I thought it was like it was 
It was smooth. It was uh, the album, the theme went through well. And I think if you looking, if you listen to Ra Ra all the time, the Ra Ra hip hop, hip hop, and you want to have fun, listen to this Travis Scott album. You just check it out. Yeah. I think somebody, it's like a nice break from that. Man, I must be getting rusty. Now, if you have any sort of understanding of how this works, you can tell this is punched in. I was recording with my homie, obviously, and rookie mistake, after not doing this for a week, apparently I forgot what I was doing. That being said, we ran out of memory, and since I do this in the car, not in the real studio, there's no way for me to make up the memory and, and just continue to go. So I had to come back to the crib, add a little bit to it, and give you guys a proper send-off until the new year. My apologies, my bad. My New Year's resolution uh, for podcast world is to never let this happen again. To never, ever let this happen again. I didn't want to just put out another episode that was just me letting you guys know and get like a cheap download. I just want to, you know, make sure I explain myself and not just leave it with the cliffhanger, which may have been better, but whatever. So make your next year, your best year, be better in 2019 than you were in 18. So that by the time it's 2020, you, my friend, are going to be the shit. All right, y'all take care. Be safe. I hope you guys are hearing this not in the hospital bed because you got drunk and decided to drive. But safely in your home or in your vehicle, however you listen to this. I hope it's how you get it. Y'all be good. Let's have a, a great new year. J. Cole was my rapper of the year. He skinned everything he was on. and His, uh, his album was dope. Just about I rapped everybody else he rapped with. So that's my rapper of the year. Verse of the year goes to Jay Z for that song he did with um with Meek Mill and Rick Ross. So check that out. And that's it. I'm out. Happy New Year. Peace.